My name is Joanna Zamora. High flow nasal cannula is very present in thumb after extubation. The use of high flow nasal cannula is an increasingly popular alternative to nasal continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP, for non-invasive respiratory support of very pretend infants. Gestional age, 32 weeks after extubation. How, however, data on the efficacy or safety of such cannula in the city. Hello, I'm Kate Beavers, product developer and clinical support for BMS with something for you to consider. A particular focus of developmental care has been the effect of noise on the infant. There are concerns about the potential damage to hearing that may be caused to preterm infants. It's recognized that noise can influence short-term physiologic stability of neonates. Studies of both term and preterm infants suggest increases in noise transiently increase heart rate. Blood pressure can also be acutely affected by noise. Some studies suggest oxygen saturation levels decrease and respiratory rate alters in infants when exposed to high noise levels. It's estimated that neonates admitted to the NICU are 10 times more likely to develop sensory neural or mixed hearing loss. Ventilators and CPAP are important sources of noise in the NICU. The major source of low frequency noise in the incubator the infant can hear is from CPAP. Noise levels in an incubator with the use of CPAP are approximately 64 decibels and can be as high as 85 decibels when measured in the post-nasal space in babies on CPAP. The very premature babies we are caring for today walk a very narrow path for success. A very different baby than we had 20 years ago. Any little thing can push them over the edge into failure, complications, or long-term negative sequelae. That's why any change we make in their bedside care to minimize noxious stimuli and optimize developmentally appropriate care is a win for the infant, both today in their acute illness and tomorrow in their long-term development. Attention and consideration for hearing, muscular development, eyesight, and the order in which these areas of the brain are stimulated are vital for the best outcome. In medicines, methods. In this multicenter randomized non infantary trial, we assigned 303 very pregnant infants to receive treatment with either high flow nasal cannula, 5 to 6 liters per minute, or nasal CPAP, 7 centimeters of water, after extubation. The primary outcome was treatment followed within seven days. Not inventory was determined by calculating the absolute difference in the risk of the primary outcome. The margin of not inventory was 20 percentage points. Infants in one treatment with high flow nasal cannula. Results. The use of high-flow nasal cannula was not inferior to the use of nasal CPAP, with threatened following occurring in 52 of 152 infants in the nasal cannula group and in 39 of 151 infants in the CPAP group. Rich difference 8.4 percentage points, uh, 19.5 percent confidence in terror. Almost half the infants in one treatment with high flow nasal cannula failure with susan failure treated with CPAP, 
without reintubation. The incidence of nasal trauma was significantly lower in the nasal canal group than in the CPAP group, but there were no significant difference in rates of serious adverse events or other complications. Pros and cons. Objective. In pressure infants to compare the efficacy and safety of high flow nasal cannula, HFNC, with other not invasive methods of preparatory support including heat bus options, low flow nasal cannula, nasal continuous positive airways pressure, non invasive positive pressure ventilation, and the Bella Vista 1000 ventilator can now be upgraded for ventilation of very small premature babies, neonates and infants. The new options enable an accurate, sensitive and comfortable ventilation. The device's little weight and integrated battery, permit a wide range of use and application possibilities. Bella Vista shows excellent results in neonatal ventilation. The positive experiences even with premature babies show, that Pelavista is on the same level like specialized neonatal ventilators. Accurate delivery of tidal volumes from 2 milliliters, allow ventilation and monitoring of patients with very low birth weights. The neonatal options, provide a full ventilation platform to cater for the full range of patients and ventilation needs, in the most demanding hospital environments. Analysis was claimed to determine the efficacy of HFNC in infants with different underlying illness of a different gestational age, parenchymal lung disease, apnea of prematurity, 
correct gestational age greater than or equal to 30. Bronchopulmonary dysplasia. This is a cranial lung condition that affects newborn babies who have been on a ventilator at birth or were born very pregnant. We use oxygen in little tiny babies properly. There are some concern. Can oxygen do any damage to the lung in a baby? Um, the uh, very high levels of oxygen actually can. Um, cause damage to the lung by the way of uh, oxygen radicals. Um, that's particularly important for children who are born prematurely uh, and whose lungs are not very well. Is there a name for this particular condition? Uh, that uh, condition is, is known as bronchopulmonary dysplasia. Okay, is this permanent damage? Does it get better in time? What? Uh, it tends to get better over time, um, but uh, if you check the lung function of children born prematurely uh, when they're 30 or 40 years old, uh, then you, you still can not see very subtle defects in, in airflow obstruction. And they would be, act like, almost like an asthmatic the first year? Uh, for the first year or two, it's not uncommon for them to actually have a lot of uh, uh, asthma types of exacerbations. Um, most of these children do get better when they get older, but as I mentioned, uh, you know, even decades after they're born, uh, you can often see very, very subtle uh, defects in, in their lung function.